Surrounded by the magical barrier, Xiao Bei Han angrily pointed his sword to the side, his eyes blazing as he demanded to know if Zhang was truly comparing the worthless power of that piece of trash to his own. In Xiao Bei Han's eyes, Zhang was naive, but Zhang stood there, calm and silent for several moments. Just then, Little Nine reappeared, fixing Xiao Bei Han with a sinister gaze as a smile spread across her face. Zhang, now enveloped by Little Nine's poisonous mist, remained calm as he asked Xiao Bei Han if he was truly comparing the person he was now to the person he used to be. Such thinking, he remarked, was indeed naive. Growing weary of him, he commanded Little Nine to appear and give him a beating. She extended her hands to her sides, releasing a surge of powerful energy as she advanced toward Xiao Bei Han, ready to carry out Jiang's order. Xiao Bei Han raised his sword defensively in front of his face, confusion flickering in his eyes as he began to wonder who she was. Little Nine moved at high speed, launching attacks from all directions, but Xiao Bei Han skillfully blocked each one with his sword. No matter where the attacks came from, he deflected them all. Jiang, watching in surprise, began to wonder if Xiao Bei Han was harnessing the energy of the protective sword. He hadn't expected Xiao Bei Han to possess such abilities in a moment like this. Fortunately for Xiao Bei Han, a beast suddenly appeared. With a great leap, it opened its mouth, ready to attack Little Nine. Both she and Xiao Bei Han turned to the side, instantly going on alert. He extended his hand towards her, releasing the poisonous mist. Fixing his gaze on the now awakened beast, he decided it was time to unleash their full power. Turning his hand towards the beast, he summoned two dragons made of poisonous mist, commanding them to corrode Xiao Bei Han and envelop Little Nine. He also summoned small insects, enticing them with the promise of top quality fierce beast meat, declaring that the first to arrive would be the first to feast. Hearing this, the insects emerged, advancing and preparing to attack. With the dragons and insects now present, Little Nine began running towards him, a smile spreading across her face. Xiao Bei Han raised both arms in front of his face, realizing this was bad. His sword's energy had been corroded, rendering it useless for attack. The beast turned, opened its mouth, and, seeing Little Nine ready to strike, roared to alert Xiao Bei Han of the impending attack. As Little Nine drew near and Xiao Bei Han could no longer block her attacks, she began striking the magic barrier with all her might. Her fists pounded against the barrier, gradually weakening it. Watching from nearby, Jiang observed the scene and realized that Xiao Zhengguo had favored some grandchildren over others, making Xiao Bei Han much harder to defeat than Xiao Yuanwu. She struck with increasing force, and gradually, the barrier began to crack. Her eyes gleamed as she fixed her gaze on Xiao Bei Han. Inside the barrier, Xiao Bei Han couldn't help but sweat and panic. Despite its strength, the barrier was clearly on the brink of breaking under Little Nine's relentless assault. It was only a matter of time. Where she previously needed three seconds, now she would require no more than three minutes. Meanwhile, in the surveillance room, Yuan Guang started observing the fight. The screen displayed a blue magical barrier around the area, obscuring the view from outside. Seeing this, he recognized he was at a disadvantage now that Jiang had blocked the surveillance. He instructed Feng Chengyuan to conduct a manual investigation and, if the situation was unfavorable, to halt the combat immediately. Feng Chengyuan, a grand master of the fourth level in the spatial system, was tasked with this crucial responsibility. He pressed his fingertips together and, with a serious expression, responded with a curt, understood. Behind him, Senior Gu sat with his legs crossed and his head resting on his hand. He looked somewhat bewildered, unable to grasp why their superiors were so intent on preventing Zhen Guo's grandson from being injured or killed. Yuan Guang turned around, clasping his hands behind his back, and spoke calmly. He explained that, although that was true, the consequences of an injury or death were unknown. He questioned whether they were truly prepared for a battle with Xiao Zhen Guo, and asked if Commander Duan from the Jiangnan War District was aware of the situation. Senior Gu stared at him in silence, deep in thought. Feeling the weight of his gaze, Yuan Guang began to panic, his confusion evident. He explained that while he had issued a strict order against leaking information within the Tianjiao camp, 
the truth would inevitably come to light once the situation concluded. Senior Gu, resting his head on his fist, stared at the ceiling with a distant gaze as he immersed himself in thought. He acknowledged that Xiao Beihan's strength was indeed remarkable and was uncertain whether Jiang Chen could actually defeat him. Additionally, he couldn't comprehend the purpose behind the creation of an anti-vision barrier. At the same time, Jiang's attack was successful and he defeated the beast with ease. As the beast's body was enveloped in poisonous mist, it began to collapse. Standing beside it with his arms crossed, Jiang reflected that while the beast was indeed powerful, it had met its match in the face of the insects. Little Nine's attacks began to take their toll, and Xiao Beihan's barrier was now riddled with cracks on the verge of collapsing. She stepped back, clenched her fist tightly, and couldn't help but smile at the sight. Xiao Beihan gripped his sword tightly, panicking at the thought of it all coming to an end. He was bewildered to see that the life jade was starting to crack. Within the barrier, a crack appeared much larger and deeper than the others. Jiang observed it and calmly instructed Little Nine to focus her attacks on this weak point. Just then, a voice echoed in his mind, warning him not to delay too long as the great master of the spatial system, Feng Cheng Yuan, had arrived. Upon hearing this, Jiang's expression shifted drastically. Shock and panic overtook him as he reached out to Little Nine, starting to absorb her and instructing her to withdraw. Little Nine, who had been fiercely attacking the barrier with a clenched fist, looked on in confusion, unsure of what was happening. With a telepathic warning from an instructor skilled in the spatial system, Jiang knew he had to end the fight quickly to avoid detection. He summoned a giant insect, which began advancing toward the magic barrier and started to explode. Inside the barrier, Xiao Bei Han watched the insect with a look of confusion, his sweat and panic mounting as he struggled to understand what was happening just as the situation was about to unfold. It was too late. The insect Jiang had summoned exploded, sending energy surging into the barrier. This triggered a massive explosion within. The intensity of the energy inside the barrier was so immense that when it finally gave way, it erupted with the force of a nuclear blast. The explosion shattered the barrier that Luo Sandao had erected. Clutching her belly with both hands, she began to collapse to the ground. Mu Heng Kiu, who was nearby, rushed over, reaching out to her and asking if she was all right. Meanwhile, the explosion generated a thick curtain of smoke. Several seconds later, as the smoke began to clear, it revealed a section of the ground that was shattered. Flags lay scattered, and only Xiao Beihan's arm and sword remained. Jiang approached the scene, retrieved the sword, and surveyed the area, noting that only the arm was left. He began to wonder if the Great Master had intervened to save him. With lingering doubts, he decided to prioritize retrieving the arm, planning to recover the rest later. He approached Luo Sandao, handed her the sword, and asked her to take good care of the weapon that belonged to her family. As the sword slowly descended towards the ground, Luo Sandao raised her hands to catch it, blushing slightly as she thanked him. Mu Henkyu gathered the flags scattered on the ground while Luo Sandao retrieved the sword. Both approached Jiang, and Luo Sandao informed him that, having collected three advancement flags, they were now among the top ten. Jiang offered to share the flags with them, but Mu Henkyu declined, expressing her desire to see him surpass Wu Shuang and secure first place. Luo Sandao also refused, noting that having the sword was more than enough for her. At that moment, someone slammed their fist on the table, Yuan Guang, with Feng Cheng Yuan beside him. He placed both hands on the table, his face contorted with anger, and demanded to know what had gone wrong and why Xiao Beihan hadn't been teleported in time. Initially, he closed his eyes and remained silent, deep in thought. When he finally spoke, his voice was calm as he explained that the poisonous fog had been too intense. His spiritual energy had barely reached the barrier, and he hadn't been able to see anything clearly as the energy was quickly corroded by the poison. Then came the explosion. He had exerted all his strength to teleport Xiao Beihan, but it was already too late. Yuan Guang began pointing at him, glaring intensely into his eyes. He demanded to know how the poison could corrode mental power and told him not to shirk responsibility. At that moment, someone shouted loudly, ordering Yuan Guang to be quiet. Startled, Yuan Guang stood up, turned around, and with a trembling voice, attempted to apologize. The person who spoke was Senior Gu. 
Fixing Yuan Guang with a stern gaze, he asked angrily if Yuan Guang understood why he was perpetually stuck at the peak of the fifth level, transformation. He explained that the reason was Yuan Guang's tendency to follow the powerful without passing the test of the heart. Senior Gu had previously mentioned the great general of the sword, the consequences, and other related matters. For this reason, he hadn't even bothered to respond. If Senior Gu dared to act, he was also prepared to face the consequences on the battlefield. Even those who were invincible in nine transformations could fall in combat, so Xiao Beihan was insignificant. Yuan Guang took several steps back, growing nervous, and clarified that he had not mentioned Xiao Zhengguo, only Commander Duan. Gu Kaitian turned his back to him, slightly glancing over his shoulder. Clenching his fists, he calmly instructed him to first report inside the camp, while ensuring that the information remained strictly confidential outside. He added that by six o'clock the next morning, before the evaluation and the end of the camp, no one who had been eliminated would be allowed to leave the camp. He turned his back on them and began walking towards the door, stating that his first stop would be the Southern Theatre Command. Yuan Guang and Feng Cheng Yuan watched him in silence. Meanwhile, a system window appeared in the sky, announcing to everyone that Xiao Beihan had been eliminated by Jiang Chen. Everyone gazed up at the sky, stunned and unable to believe that Xiao Beihan had been eliminated. Shocked, they wondered if they had heard incorrectly, given that he was the legitimate grandson of the great national general. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the camp, a boar-shaped beast made its appearance. The beast lunged at Tang Ying and Bai Feng, but they easily dodged its attack, causing it to crash to the ground. Tang Ying stood in stunned disbelief, unable to accept that Jiang had actually eliminated Xiao Bei Han. Bai Feng, however, remained composed and serious, finding the situation highly unusual. Elsewhere in the camp, a beast shaped like a white lion appeared. However, it was struck forcefully by someone, sending its body crashing to the ground. The one who had defeated the beast was Wu Shuang. Seated atop its corpse, he crossed his arms, smiled, and found the situation quite intriguing. 